We live, fellas. So uh, you have to go on and uh, share it first. Is in the building. I think, what's I think up, he Jake? made it what's in. What's going on with you, brother? What's going on, hey, Terry Dorsey? What's up, baby? How you doing, sir? What's up, man? You know, this is a very, very important day for us here in America, and uh, I'm doing double duty. You know, what I mean, I'm working on a Kanye West campaign as well as doing the Two Shady Radio all at the same time. So, you know, it's just what we got to do to get America back to being where we should be, man. How are you doing? Well, it's all good because we're trying to make America great. And I see uh, it might be happening. It might not be happening. It's going down today. It's Super Tuesday. Today is Super yeah. Touche Day. What's super Touche Thank you very Man. much. And you know, it's a million things going on today. And y'all know how we always get down with the first topic of the day. And y'all know how we get down. Uh, I don't know if you got the roast wheel ready, but the first Always, we got to start by having a little fun with the get em. tag edition. We got the roast wheel. So, show us, Shady. All right, man. So, you know, this hey, is you uh, know, this the new show. Huh? You know what we What'd roasting today. Who we you roasting know? today, brother? The, the politicians, man. We got the roast people who trying to stop you from voting. Nah, man. Let's do a little. Let's roast the Electoral College just in case. Okay, let's do it. All right, so first spin for the East C. Let's see. Round and round. Oh, it's time. I love that little suit you got on. I think I will roast that little yeah, suit man. you got on. And I'm mad, Joe. Connection. Uh, would you have to plug that in with an antenna and a wire? Your connection is terrible. Yeah, pretty much, man. I wish I could screenshot you. I got a hanger hanging off the back of my phone. Hey, listen, so tell. first one... First one is goof ass for the electoral college. All so, right. So first, why is you uh, trying to represent us if you don't represent us with your goof ass? First of all, electoral college, do goof ass. Listen to the people because I was in line and everybody said that Trump shouldn't be winning because he's dividing the country. Your goof ass. 
Yeah, uh, keeping Jim Crow alive with your old stupid goof ass. Talk yeah. about some, this is the way it's going to make things fair in America. Nah, this is the way you tip the scale with your goof ass. You ain't slick. Y'all pay attention, man. EC, that's what I'm going to start calling it. I'm going to start calling the Electoral College out like he a real person. Old EC, goofy looking ass nigga. Hey, but I ain't know the Electoral College was people that they decided to choose. I thought it was like senators, Joe Goof ass. Y'all just regular people and y'all not vote with us, Joe Goof ass. You better hope we don't find your Goof ass. We definitely going to say something if you don't vote the way we want to vote Joe Goof ass. Wow, you sound real upset about that, man. You know, it ain't the EC fault. It's the racist people to put EC in power. That's the problem with the Electoral College. They don't want to let go of the, the tool they got that they can use to manipulate these elections. And I ain't no goof ass, so I ain't falling for it. Don't get me wrong. I voted, but I already know how they play in this political game. So get your Man. goof ass out of here and take that shit off the ballot. Finally, then we we'll all be ready to vote. Spin the wheel again. Let's roast. Uh, one more time. One more time. One more and let's, roast, let's roast people who uh, who came who came strapped to voters trying to stop old people from voting today. Anybody who came trying to stop you from voting, we roasting your goof ass. You came to, oh wait, what you got, baby? I'm mad at that suit though. Every, I see every crease in that joint. I see you breathing through that motherfucker, boy. You got the Tom Cruise. Suit. I'm tight, brother. It's tight today. It's my black man and white. I'm getting on. Look at me. That's what we landed on. Look at me. Oh, that does happen. A lot. Look at me. I finally got a gun. Now I want to take advantage of older people who uh yeah. trying to vote Look at and me. they rights. <laughs> Look at me. I ain't never been to war, but I'm going to go to war with my own people. Look at the stupid <laughs> ass. Look at me. I'm going to go somewhere where I can bully somebody knowing that I got bigger guns than everybody else. They said, Look at me, my dick loves. So I got to come try to run some shit. <laughs> face ass. Get your, look at me. I'm protecting my Second Amendment right. You can't even spell amendment with your right. dumb ass. Look at right. you, stupid. Look at look at me. Uh, why uh, I can't let nobody else vote, even though it's more white people than black people. Why y'all just vote for Trump and just get the hell on about the way? Look at me, goof ass boy. Now the truth of it is, look at me. They so stupid. They so scared. They don't even know what to do. So they lashing out at anybody, trying to get the attention of everybody, and it's working. So don't you fall for that shit either. Look at me when I tell you that shit. That's what it should be. Well, I'm going to tell you, you old look at me trying to stop an old lady from voting. I was there, and I was ready for anybody to come with their thing. And I tell you what, I wish you look at me as we try to bully old people where I was at. I guarantee you, Straight I'm like ready that. for you. I look at me. Look. Yeah, look at me. Yeah, we can flip the script. Look at me. Don't look at them. Look at me. Stop picking on little little old ladies and little and ladies and dudes running up on chicks trying to fight them because they believe in something different than you look at. You really right. do need to take a good look at yourself and understand how goofy your ass look. Just do a throwback to the last one. Yeah, just a little throwback. But look though, we're gonna get into our next topic because we got uh a lot going on and it's you know always time uh how we gotta get down for our uh, hot button headlines so you know the yes. headlines of the week you know today is what it is and you know it does what it do and <laughs> uh obviously the hottest button we could think of is the election so uh mr suit and tie shoulder not matching one of the three he's got the shirt from uh carson's the tie from walmart and the shoulder pads from uh marie claire body ass uh i need you damn. to play damn man <laughs> kanye just lost connecticut man god damn it damn god, it god, man god. I was, we was hoping we, we were hoping we were gonna have some headway in Connecticut, and it just you know that was that was that was a stronghold state for us, man. So losing that wasn't good, but yeah, with well, uh, the hot button headlines today, I guess would be, uh, what's your political affection? It ain't got nothing to do with your party, I guess. What is going on today? Who you loving? Who you want to be voting for? Well, you know what I love, honestly. Look today, today. Look, let me tell you what happened. So I looked on my ballot and I saw Willie. Washington, the Willie Party. They had the yeah. Willie Party. I didn't know yeah. that they had a Willie Party. And he had his own party. And you know what surprised me? Kanye wasn't even on the Chicago ballot. Yeah, I know. I was just about to speak on that. It's been a lot of voter suppression around the birthday party. You know, anytime you start something new in America, they tend to want to suppress it. And, you know, it's been a two party system for too long. Running independent is the way we, we really should be voting for the independents. And it's a shame what they did to Mr. West. 
Um, he even he even pulled himself out of the presidential race that I just be the VP, hoping that that would help some of these racist mother lovers, you know, feel OK with him. He's done everything. He can. Hold on one second. Hold on. I'm just getting something. Uh, actually, actually, we got a comment from the audience. Uh, Mr. Shelton Wood says, uh, tell Mr. Dorsey to make goatees great again. Make go cheese great again. You funny son of a bitch, you. That was good. <laughs> well, I said that if Kanye didn't win, I'd grow my facial hair back. I was doing all this hell Jesus to make sure that please, we brought Mr. Naked up. Lip. Please, Mr. Naked Lip. Put why it away. can I? Why yeah. can't I just wear Natasha? Your this lip, your fault. Why can't your I just wear the like, face, man? Your lip look like uh, the top lip look like a fresh shade coochie. The bottom lip look like mm. underarm hair. Straight lips. This is exactly <laughs> what we've been dealing with at the you Kanye West like, campaign all it, year. You it know, it's just like, vicious attacks from the right, vicious attacks from the left. No matter what, Kanye just wants to do his part to give the everyday man his voice back. And it's, you know, hold on, second. I got to take this earpiece off. Let me explain something to y'all, okay? I don't have. It's my right. This is my body. If I don't want to wear a mustache or a beard, you can't make me until you know, <laughs> Trump is just. I, you know, y'all you, acting like I'm a woman or something. Like, what the fuck, bro? You know what I'm saying? Damn. I mean, I'm double. I'm a triple minority. I think it's I'm, a, I'm, I think it's offensive to everybody who uh, is forced to wear like that because they uh, have been put on the sex offender list. And and I don't think we you should have to endure the pains of the sex offender up a lip. Uh, just, hey, listen, <laughs> if this is what it takes, put a couple okay. Of on it. If this is what it takes for me to be able to wear my natural face, okay, I will fight. This is one of the things Kanye West was running on, the ability for black men to not have to wear mustaches and not be judged by our facial hair, but right. be judged by the content of our comedy. That's what this okay. is really about, bro. I see. So uh, so our next hot button topic is, <laughs> is did you vote? And um, if you did vote, uh, what's uh, did you take your time and vote for the judges and the people like that? Well, I mean, you know, when I was looking at the, at the ballot that we had, you know, here in, in California and what was available, I did take time to go through. I did look at my sample ballot. It was very hard to look at anything. So I just Googled everybody's campaign ads and see who had the most slanderous campaign ad and voted for the other person. That's what I did. I'm going to be straight up with you. Anybody who I saw was on pure BS, you could just tell by your ad campaign what type of political campaign. Yeah, yeah. that's why I vote for the opposite. Yeah, that makes sense. I vote for the opposite. I'm like, see, you being a little too nasty, bringing up people, kids and shit. All right, cool. That's whatever. I ain't voting for you. And I would just take my sample ballot and do it that mm -hmm. way. So, Well, that makes sense. Why wouldn't you do it like that? I mean, hell, we make millionaires out of people on social media based on the content they put out. I feel like we can use those same principles for the content that's being put out by some of these campaigns. If it's too offensive, I'm not voting for you. Yeah, OK. No, oh, yeah, I dig it, man. You know, uh, Taney is just texting me saying he OK, here he comes. All right. So, yeah, you're right, man. And, and it is time for our next topic. And let's get it get it moving because we're going to talk more about this presidential race and uh, throwing shade and and also with our artists as well. So uh, he wanted to get in on some of it. So we want to change up the little flow of it. So we're going to throw our artist interview in. And today's artist, I'm telling y'all, man, is a legend uh, in his own right, a straight beast in uh, Chicago, Detroit, all across the country, what I would say, um, for over 20 years straight, uh, monster in the game, uh, one of my really great friends. Uh, Shady, you want to continue this? Because I know you got Yeah, man, and I mean, and no disrespect to you calling him a legend, but I feel like legends are past their prime. That's why we call him legend. This man is not a legend. This man is a legend in the making because he's yeah. been consistent. Decade after decade, putting out great content on stage, on TV, whatever the case may be. Um, he's a good brother from the Midwest, which I appreciate. My Midwest brothers always standing tall in this game of entertainment, man. And this dude is is right there on the Mount Rushmore of comics from the Midwest, man. Y'all, please make some noise at home. Hit a like button. Hit something, man, for my man, Mr. Martini Harris. Yeah, what up? Baby? Yeah, what up? Yes, <laughs> What's going on, killer? What's going on with you? 
Oh man, I'm just ducking bullets and trying to get across the street from these Ubers and driving all these people to the doggone poles for free. Oh, yeah. oh wait a minute, wait a minute. You can take an Uber for free? I know, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, no. I, well, I heard they say it for free, but I think it's seven dollars or something like that. <laughs> That's why you end up trucking. Seven, seven dollars, yeah. So, so you know, seven dollars. You know, people going to use that. You know, somebody stay close to the polls. Like, yeah, I'm going to vote. And brother, get out the car and <laughs> go to the house. Like, nigga, that's what I want to do. <laughs> that's what that yeah, you was going to shit. Yeah, I bet, bet she was going to get on the poll, not going to the poll. Right. That's what they were. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. They get on the poll. <laughs> they going to get on the hey, poll. Hey, man, well, look. It's not, I mean, uh, now you uh, you in Detroit right now, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's warm. Are right, you in the decent... Well, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. What is it like out there? Was the weather feeling like? But what's the what's the general temperature? How people feeling out there right now? What you think is going on oh, out there? All right. Well, the weather the weather is smooth, man. To be you know to be the beginning of November, you know what I'm saying we in the 60s. We be in the 60s all week and uh, summer next week. Now the temperature of people they on a hundred. Yeah, yeah, they on a hundred. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, people shaking in their boots. You know what I'm saying? And people saying, you know, Trump gonna win. I mean, my thing is, if you're going to say Trump is going to win, then please have your own point of view. Don't go off what you've been hearing. That's and that's true. what they're doing. They're hearing other people. You know Trump going to win. Yep, yep. And they go off into their own circle. Yeah, you know Trump going to win. How you know? Uh, I don't know. I'll be back. Let me go see what they was talking about again. Yeah. Man, get your ass out of here and have your own right, point of view. Exactly. Exactly. That's the way the right. machine works, though. History. Yeah. History about to be made, baby. History that's about yeah. to be made. Joe hey, Biden, about hey, to be the first man to ever do three terms, and Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is going to be the first African American female to ever be the vice president of the United States of America. Yes, sir. That's man, I'm with you on that, man. Don't get me wrong, man. You know, all year, you know how it is, man. I've been joking about stuff. I've been joking about Kanye, been joking about everything else. But at the end of the day, those are jokes. I even did a video earlier today, like, hey, man, don't let my jokes fool you. This is a very right. important election. We got to get this man out. But more importantly, we got to get these people in. We need a change because what's been happening over the last couple of years has just been a continual downward oh, spiral. Mm. I'll tell you this. What's been, happen what's been happening, um, well, you said the last couple of years. I want to go back to the Bush era. You know okay. what I'm saying? You know, every since... You know, ever since that whole shade tree thing and started with the with the looking for bodies, looking for bodies up under the 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 mass destruction of the world Man. trade. You yeah, looking for yeah. body, you looking for that money and gold, but it was mm -hmm. already gone. You know what I'm saying? What are you what are you yeah. looking for bodies for? That's stupid. Mm -hmm. But it goes way back there, dog. You know what I'm saying? And it, you know, and even <clears throat> just to get um biblical on it a little bit, you know, just like the Bible reads, you know. There is no peace on earth and it will mm. never be any peace on earth. You got to have peace within mm. yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and that's when you get that peace on earth. And then here we are. I mean, you know, we got a, we had Obama and he got through that thing without scandals. You know what I'm saying? They wanted yeah. to put him on, but he was he was smart. He no, his wife. Well, well he was smart, too, but his wife was smart. They had both yeah, they yeah. Had each other back. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. They were young. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. Anytime a president slipped, it's because the other one didn't have their back. They they weren't wow. looking. They weren't on their mark. You know what I'm saying? Michelle was on Obama's mark and Obama was on Michelle's mark. So here it is. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, you got you got a point with that, man, because he had a really good team behind him. Uh shout yeah, out good. to Malik. Shout out to uh, Shawani Playwright. Uh uh, we got a lot of people here. Shout out to Chill. It's a lot of people happy and making comments. They saying it's ridiculous that people Wait, think that Trump should should win, but you gotta understand, hey, man. man, it's a lot of Trump yeah. fans out there, man. Go man, ahead. I just you? I just got word over the phone, man. Kanye lost. He's gonna lose Illinois too, man. man he ain't in <laughs> Illinois. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah, man. I mean, but that's just, just it. Always hurt for your candidate to lose their home state. That's not a good look for the election. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, he was never you know, gonna win Illinois because he wasn't. Kanye no said he's never coming home again. That's what I just but, heard from the party. They said he's never coming home again. You know, um, he's never coming home. Howie Hawkins and Angela Walker, uh, uh -huh. Gloria La Riva and Leonard uh, Peltzer for the Socialist Party. And then Brian Carola, Carol Amar Patel for the Solidarity Party. We had a couple people on 
on the ballot, but mm -hmm. I ain't know none of these people existed. Why is it that these people weren't able to debate? Why weren't well, they at the presidential debate? Why is it that they, they had no money? No, they they ain't ain't no money. nothing to do with nothing. They on the list. They don't, don't want matter. them they, because it's, it's, it's like rival. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's just like, you know what I'm saying? You got, you got the, I, I just go with college teams because everybody loves, you know, the, yeah. the pro, pro football. But I go with college teams. If you, if you got two college teams that you're not interested in looking at, you change the channel. But if you got Michigan and Michigan State playing, you watching you that. You say that because you from uh, Detroit. Why you can't say uh, Illinois and Illinois State? No, I only from the D, boy. That's why. I know. Them the only ones I know. <laughs> yeah. No, I, hey, man, I don't know about sports, really. Kool-Aid Kool -Aid used to always mm -hmm. tease me about that and say, man, Martini don't know shit about sports. He don't know nothing about sports. Because, you know, I just say, man, they go to the um, they go to the Pro Bowl, they're going to win, they gonna win the Wimbledon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, I'm with you, man. I've been getting in trouble all the time, man. They be like, you don't watch football, you don't watch this. I'm like, no, man, I'm out here trying to make myself a millionaire. I ain't got time to watch other millionaires run around. I'm trying to get my money. Mm -hmm. And so, that's the easiest millionaires, playing with some pig skin. So real Straight quick, right. real quick, Tini, let's uh, dig into a little bit about what's going on in the life and times uh, during this pandemic with you. I know you voted. I know we already understand where you stand. Of course, uh, you better. We better understand where you stand. Yes, definitely we voted. Uh, so uh, I know that you are uh, got a lot of things going on with your career. Uh, what's going on with you? Tell us about your next audition. I hear, I, I believe you're going to get it. But tell the people uh, what's going on and how we can help you get to that level. Oh, man. Um, well, right now I'm writing my comedy out. So, uh -huh. yeah, that's, that's, that's about to go down. You know what I'm saying? That's coming up. I don't want to get too far in it, but I'll be um, taping my comedy album in Las Vegas um, real oh. soon. So really? hopefully if this, COVID, if this COVID don't come and shut that down, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Or if people, it ain't COVID, it's the people. Because they got to yeah. wear their masks, man. You got to wear your mask. And I'm not just saying that so I can get my comedy album. I want to <laughs> say that so you can live, man. So you can live and be with your family. COVID's like cigarettes now. It ain't no more. You smoke, smoke kills. Hey, COVID out here taking. But anyway. Yeah, that's um, real. Facts. I'm also working on, um, now, the audition part of this biopic that I've been chasing, man, since the mid-90s, you know, um, when Damon Wayans, the Damon Wayans was first said to play Richard Pryor with, uh, yeah. with, with TriStar and Paramount. And, mm -hmm. but, you know, Richard himself snatched that from him, you know what I'm saying? He didn't want him to do it. So it just went on. But right now, um, um, Kenyon Barris has it. The creator of now, Kenya Barris will produce some other big pieces of work. Just for the people who don't know who Kenya Barris is, yeah. why don't you explain to them who that is for us? Oh yeah, Kenya Barris, man, he produced um Blackish, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. which they um just added on some more seasons. Um, yeah. great show, man, great show. I love yeah. it. I love it. Um, um comments, uh, cast. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, um, uh, um, Girls Trip. Girls, girls, right? Yeah. Girl, yeah. movie too. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yeah. So yes, just sir. so you know, I mean, they, they got some hitters behind this. You know, I mean, again, we they bringing some power behind it, but that also opens the playing field back up. Because what was interesting is, you know, Mike Epps was slated to play uh, Richard, and I never know what I just still don't know what happened with it. I haven't seen Mike since then. I bumped into Mike right before he was about to film it, and I thought he was doing a pretty good job. But something happened and it fell apart. And I was kind of shocked about that. So now we got a whole new team, new directors, <laughs> new production company, and they're going to be looking for the new face that's going to play Richard. So, you oh, know, yeah. what a lot of people might not know about the man that's on this screen right now, it ain't just that he could do Richard or anybody else. He is a great um, impressionist. You know, Martini has always been able, he, he impersonates you while he roasts you. So he, right. he don't even need to do that. <laughs> You yeah, know, he can impersonate you, Johnny, on the spot. But we were talking before the show about something. This isn't you trying to do an impersonation. Why don't you kind of yeah. explain it, what, what your process is for even trying to attempt something this big? Right. Oh, wow, man. Um, <clears throat> I put a piece together 
that you can catch on YouTube. And um, it's, it's titled Channeling a Legend. So I, I'm channeling Mr. Richard Pryor. Well, I got the whole idea from an episode of Good Times I was watching on my phone on YouTube. And okay. it was the episode when J.J. dreamed he was white. So after I got through the episode and I thought about it, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, dang, man, I can, you know, put a piece together to say, you know, I dreamed that I'm Richard Pryor. So um, I called my boy up. <clears throat> Excuse me. I called my boy up, Tony McCant on Facebook. His name Tony Tail. That's Tony Roberts, comedian Tony Roberts, from phenomenal comedian, hilarious. That's his son. So I told Tony, I shared the plan, the, the idea with Tony Tail, and he filmed it, he edited it, and he helped direct it, um, direct this piece. And I went through it, man, and was just channeling this brother. So everything that I'm doing on there is all raw, straight raw. No script. It's just straight raw. I just wanted to take it to that point. Now, I want to, I, I, I'm using that as um, entertainment as well as an audition reel that someone sees that to put me on some type of dais or whatever to, to yeah. um, place me in front of that, not the door, but the door knob. Because you can be any door, but it's that particular doorknob that I want to touch, turn, and it's mine. You know what I'm saying? Because when I go in there, man, I'm giving it. I'm giving it. But one of the things Face was saying is that it's important for you to kind of crowdsource the idea. So we're going to put a link in this on the rebroadcast to make sure everybody who's watching gets a chance to, you know, at least click on it. We'll put it up on our pages, too. Right. Because I don't have to see it to know what you do. Okay. But some people need to see it. I've seen you transform yourself multiple times into just characters on stage where it's like, where does he get that from? Because you were one person and then you're a totally different person. This is something I saw in Godfrey too, where Godfrey has a way of just switching it on and off. And you can oh, be, yeah. you can literally have a conversation with the character you created for yourself, you know, because you can separate. So yeah, I'll make sure we put that and I'm sure face be on that too, you know, make sure we post the link. And I want to say this, bro. I want to say this, like, <clears throat> um, mental illness is real. It's real. It's a real thing. You know, a lot of people are ashamed. That's why they end up, you know, har harming themselves or harming others or putting themselves in yeah. difficult situations. But I, I say that to say this, when I go on stage for, for some reason, I know I'm touched by mental illness. But I don't let it control. I know I don't wait, let it control wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? Uh, you got to I don't, I don't, okay. You got to explain that one. You, you yeah, get, I, I know you were tired and funny. I get yeah. it. You retired on stage, but you saying the, it, it hit you. Yeah, I mean it ain't. I mean it's there. I mean, but I, I allow it. I, I control it. I don't let it control me. That's how I'm now, able to transform into these characters and I can be, you know what I'm saying? I stay in character no matter if I'm if nobody's laughing, because that's yeah. where the true talent lies. Because people so, can, you know what I'm saying? An entertainer can stay in character as long as he's getting that laughter. But as soon as they stop laughing, he break. Yeah. The true, yeah. the true the true essence of it is to stay in character when they're not laughing. Because oh, when they're when, yeah. when they're laughing, they're loving you. When they're not laughing, the person that can do something for you is loving you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah that's they call it, uh, don't drop the pug. Don't drop the pig. Don't drop the pug. That's what they taught us. Hey, about, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know what? Come, come. And you know what? Here on the Boy Ted Show, we, we are weird. And sometimes we just like to pull uh, things off the internet because uh, Facebook hates for us to play anything unless we got rights to it, of course. So right. uh, in leading into what you're saying, the clip that I have for you, it reminds us of all of that. And I don't know if you even remember this. So I'm a, I'm a, I don't know. Do you remember this episode that you shot? And I'm pulling up here and we're going to play it. It's a three minute clip. You do some okay. impersonations. And this was, this is shows you how deep, uh, Martini gets when it comes to um, his characterism, uh, the fact that his love for the game, and you can see his respect and his love for the game. And and this is, we just gonna show this quick clip if that's okay with you. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get it in. Here we go. Yes, Y'all give it up for my uncle. He just got off drugs. Yeah, now he's drinking. 
Yes, he is, you know. But you can't get it twisted, you know what I'm saying? Because he's not like the original alcoholics, you know what I'm saying? The ones that talk with a slur and drive in three lanes, none of that. Nah, this brother gets so messed up, he literally turns to other people. Yeah, I came home one day, this brother turned to Richard Pryor, messed me up. The family think he's sick, but to me that was a show. I'm like, hey, Unc, how you doing? Say, man, I was doing good before you walked in here. I said, what's wrong with you? Baby, I messed up. This is wrong, baby. You understand? You just blowing my eye. I said, man, how you get drunk? Man, give me $10 and I'll show you. <laughs> Brother looking at me like, man, I just came back from the casino. I took off all my clothes and jumped on the crap table and hollered, Blackjack. <laughs> Brother got me in trouble. Had me doing Richard Pryor since I was seven years old. Got away with everything. Yeah, my father be like, boy, check out the garbage. Man, I ain't taking out nothing. <laughs> I'm going to tell your mama, tell the trick. <laughs> oh, go on ahead. No, I ain't talking about my real mama. You understand? I respect women. I love women. You got that right. Certain type of women I like. Big women. Yeah, like me a thick woman. That's what it is. Y'all didn't hear about the little guys. We like big girls. You understand? See, it's the little women you can't be messing with all the time. You know what I'm saying? It's like the big girls, the thick ones. You know? I was in love with a girl who weighed 285 pounds. Yeah, we stood at the bus stop together looking like the number 10. Just... <laughs> and where the bus at? I said, I don't know, big old. Ain't nothing wrong with that, you know? I take her out, try to wind her down, and she burped and said, bell tire. I said, I like you. <laughs> you are so sweet. I know some of the fellas looking at me like I'm nasty, but a lot of y'all, y'all do it to anything. Yeah, a lot of men, they'll do it to anything. They get drunk. You can kick a hole in the wall, draw a woman around it, and man, it still hit it. Come out smiling like, what's wrong? Shoot, I just got me some drywall. Two weeks later, he in the clinic. What happened, man? She didn't gave me asbestos. <laughs> you got to stay protected when you're naked. Protect yourself. That's what you got to do. Ain't nothing wrong with it. That's what I teach my son. My son's 16 years old. You know what I'm saying? I got to teach him things like that. You got to stay protected when you're naked. Don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. Don't have sex. He listen. You know, my son, he's very creative. He is. Like this past Halloween, I think he had the best costume in the world. Yeah, he put baby powder all over his body. I'm like, what you supposed to be? He said, anthrax. <laughs> my daughter ran out as an envelope. I was like, okay. No, y'all ain't gonna get no candy, right? Little terrorists. <laughs> my son wanna be a comedian. Tell my daddy, I wanna do comedy like you. I'm like, all right, tell me a joke. He told me a joke. I thought it was funny. So I said, I share it with the audience. Now, if they laugh, then you got potential. If they don't, hey, stay in school. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? This is a joke he told me. He said it was a dude dying of cancer, but he was going around telling people he was dying of AIDS. So his son said, Dad, why you telling people you dying of AIDS? He said, it's because when I'm gone, won't nobody mess with your mama. Yeah, I'm going to tell them stay in school. I'm going to keep that one. Yeah. Hey. I don't know if no, y'all heard that. You I ain't hear hard, that. It's hard to hear from our end, but uh, you did your Richard Pryor with your uncle. Uh, you talked about the baby with the anthrax and it was over. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, you know what Josie did. Uh, yeah. You and your yeah. girl standing at the bus stop as number 10. Uh, uh, you, you know, hey, hey, yeah. it was hilarious. It's hilarious. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people on here cracking up. Uh, so trust me, when you see it back, you, you're you going to laugh. But you see your own jokes a million times. Question. Oh, yeah. yeah. When you do your sets now, because you've been doing it so long, are you are you actually sick of your best jokes, or do you still find joy in doing like some of your top tier jokes? I, I, I man, I always find joy in doing my doing any of my jokes, man. I treat my I treat my material like my children. I don't have a best one. I love them all. <laughs> yep, yep. That's beautiful, and that's a good thing. So, uh, as the, as you audition uh, for this Richard Pryor role. Um, uh, um, uh, you have been preparing for this, I know, your whole career. But is there any like 
rocky like extra things are you doing are you sleeping with richard pryor in your ear are you like you know what i'm saying are you you know dressing like him every day and you know really like forcing it oh well man i've been doing that since i was seven and i studied that man i studied that man yeah. since i was seven so every day man i'm doing i'm doing something with rich and i tell you this this is this is this is like uh um I would say something like a a guide like when I when I get when I get a cold how I how I find out if I'm getting better if I'm doing Richard Pryor's voice and the closer that I'm getting to his voice I'm said okay I'm getting better the wow. if I if I don't sound like him then I'm like dang man I'm still sick so I got to get that Say man, I get down and down, 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 yeah, that's crazy. Down, down, you know. So I mean, <laughs> man, it's amazing, man. Yeah. Hey, wait, man. Hold on, wait, hold on, wait. What happened? Hey, excuse me, one second, fella. <laughs> Kanye lost Mississippi. He lost Mississippi, yeah. bro. He God, wasn't dang. on Mississippi's ballot. See, well, he see, see, he he was huh? on this Kanye thing from day one. I'm a Kanye team. lost Kim. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we would get Mississippi. I really did. I thought we'd get Mississippi, man. I'm really. Nah, I don't think the thing is, we knew he wasn't going to win. We just wanted Kanye to win one state because if you don't let him win at least one state, you know he's going to come back and it's not going to be over. <laughs> That's funny. So this just forewarning, Kanye has said no different than Trump said he ain't leaving the White House. He said if we don't win at least one state, I'm going to petition for the next three years and he's going to be on every ballot. So some of y'all who ain't voted, this is that time. You might have a little time left. Let somebody keep Kanye great because we don't want to see him go crazy, man. So uh, right. in Chicago, they had this big thing about uh, the taxes. Um, it's huge thing about if you vote for the fair tax rule, uh, if you vote for the fair tax, then the rich uh, get taxed more and the poor don't. In, in Detroit, is there was there a push for something in that effect to change the law of anything like that? Um, of course. I mean, that's I mean, that's something that's been here for ages. It's called the one percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that one percent. And the one percent is what they what they um titled the yacht club. And it, mm -hmm. the reason why they say yacht club, you know, because it's like the bigger the boat, the bulk of the bank. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, so it's the one percent and it's like the one percent is is when they when they turn those taxes up, they don't have to. They almost like Texas. You know, Texas don't have um, what is it? Federal tax or. Oh, right. Now, you don't right. have to pay a uh, state tax. I think well, you I pay federal. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like that. They don't have to pay that. And they watch the strugglers struggle. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You watch when you watch a struggler struggle and you rich. That's what entertains you. Because now you're sitting above someone else, mm. you know. So it's like it's almost like a lick your lips, rub your hands together with the left eyebrow up effect. So mm. yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. That's Honestly, a, man, I think most of it, to be straight up with you, them putting it on the ballot is just the way of throwing it in our face, and they're not going to let it go either way. You know, even if they oh, yeah, vote one way or another, these people control the game, so they're not going to make the man. game tip out of their favor. It ain't going to happen. They found That's a way. True. They found a way to swing it with, without uh, seeing the master behind it. Hmm. That's all it is. They I'm made good. they they changed the whip into a uh, credit scores and you know short term jail sentences. They right found there. all these different laws where they don't have to beat you down physically. They'll just beat you down physically, mentally and physically. Physically, oh yeah, mentally. Yeah, that's right. That's, listen, Kanye <laughs> taught me a lot of words y'all don't know, <laughs> and that's one of them. That's my but, you know, I catch you up. I catch you up at the end of the campaign. But yeah, man. No, I mean mentally and physically, they found different chains, they found different whips. And they and the thing is, the craziest part, they've also found so much support from black people on how to to oppress black people. Is that's what amazes me. We've been the yeah. most oppressed race on the on the on the on the planet and it's usually our people that help keep the foot on our neck and that's the one thing more than anything that hurts me to the core bro you know oh, I, I see so many people out here today promoting you know don't vote for biden biden is biden ain't shit biden ain't that and i'm like so what are you saying trump is is, is a saint 
neither one right. of them are gonna be squeaky clean. Yeah, exactly. But this dude, we, you know, we've seen what this dude when when Biden was vice president, the country was happy, which means he was there during the time of growth where we got happy, and then that was destroyed over three years by this person. And you still gonna sit here and tell me you don't think he's a better pick to run the country? Right. Man, that's that's I'm that's not, that Jim Crow BS. Playing, I'm not playing with that dude, man. That 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 guy, and, and you got you you right right there though, bro. I mean, you can't trust neither one of them, but I'm going for the the one I will start to trust. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I mean, we can't go in neither one of their houses. So, I mean, unless they're not home. But um, but at the same time, <laughs> you know. But at the same time, man, you can't trust him. But that dude, nah, he don't even know who he bombed. He didn't yeah, even he know who he bombed. He, he, he talked about he didn't bomb Afghanistan, and it was like you, you mean Sarah, Sarah? Yeah, yeah. Like, dude, what are you talking about? Do you even know who you bombed, guy? Like, yeah, you know that guy. He was. I don't know. I don't it's trust any like, real estate salesman, bro. He's a real estate salesman. I don't trust yeah, nobody yeah. to sell real estate. That's true. And that's they all cr- Anybody oh, yeah. who says everything is the greatest, I mean, you ain't never made a mistake since you've been in office. You ain't never yeah, had yeah. nothing to recommend so, so, Nothing. And so that's, what he, that's, that's what he's doing in office. He'll show you that living room, but he ain't going to tell you about that fucked up plumbing. That's funny. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> you the, you the exactly, king. bro. Katie. See, you know what I'm talking about. Katie, you yeah, the yeah. king. You the king of impersonations. Tell me, you got a Trump impersonation working? Tell me, you gonna do the black Trump? The black. <laughs> I'm gonna be uh, that. That'll be uh the trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> the trumpet. Well, it's just like this. It's just like this. I try to take my time. You know, I practice the push buttons. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's, it's it's what it is. I mean, you can put my brain in my ass, and I still couldn't think of shit. <laughs> <laughs> the black trunk. Oh, hey man. man. I promise you, man, that's something that I, I even feel like I want to work on for like, this is my second half of my career. You know, I quit and I came back and I'm so inspired by brothers oh, you like you out. who've been able to do impersonations like that. And I know it's, it's just another tool set that you've worked on. I never worked on it. And I'm realizing I probably could if I worked on it. Mm. Now, you know, I'll tell you this, bro. I'll t- be I, as good as you. i tell you this. It's, it's like, because uh, there's a lot, a lot of great impersonations on um, like Jay Farrell, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I, I, yeah. respect his, I respect his game, man. I respect his game. But everybody that does impressions, I always look for one thing. Can you do Richard Pryor? And right. Jay, Farrell, Jay Farrell got a monster. He got a monster kick on all these. He even got Idris Elba. Yeah. yeah, Richard Pryor, you don't have it, bro. Mm-hmm. You got it. I'm sorry. You don't have it. That's the and it's funny too because Richard, everybody has an idea of Richard, even if you never saw him live, right? So we all oh, know yeah. the essence of Richard Pryor. So it's not like you can just kind of use tag words and keywords to get away with it. Nah, you gotta grab the personality. Man, you gotta grab it, man. Like when I do Rich Man, there's literally in like in my mind, there's a string connected from him to me. And I'm talking about literally, it's like a million strings, dude, like from his pinky nail to mine. To his index, yeah. to my thumb, my wrist, my elbow, and whatever he's doing, I'm mocking that. You know, they think it's it's more, dude, man, and then <laughs> no, but it's more than that. You know, that's how they <laughs> like when I did Richard yeah. Pryor and, um, at the comedy store, and Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock was in a in the audience too, and I know if y'all, you know, you perform at the comedy store, yeah. and those stage lights blacken everything, you don't see yeah, nothing. You, see you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, so I just kept following Eddie's laugh, and I was directing everything to him, and I was so caught into yeah. Rich Man just, and then right man, you know, and then I was like. Um, doing a lot of stuff that I wrote as if Rich was still here, and his son gotcha. Mason, to this, his son Mason to this day thinks mm. a lot of stuff that I wrote. He thinks that's his dad. I said, "Dog, that's not your dad." He said, "Man, I'm a." He said, "Man, I'm a. I'm a, I'm a Google that man. I, I'm, I'm telling you, man, that's my. That's my pops." I said, uh, "Hey, you I, see I, how he low key just snuck and did Mason prior though? You see how he low key just snuck <laughs> that in." 
Because I know Mason too. And I was like, yeah, that dude sound like exactly what he would have said. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, but you know, uh, it's just like movie auditions, man. Which uh, I got one that's coming to Netflix. It's supposed to be in Netflix 2020, but again, the corona. So, right, right. uh, 2021, it was written, directed by the um, hip hop artist right here from Detroit, Trick Trick. Um, his brother wrote this movie, oh, man. Yeah, he directed it. Right. yeah, he wrote it, directed, he even played in it, man. He did a great job, a phenomenal job, dog, on this movie. It's called The Last 24. Y'all can check that out. Um, you can follow them on Instagram, The Last 24. So, okay, yeah, man, follow that, yeah, yeah. So, that movie will be going to um Netflix, um, uh, sometime 2021. I don't know what season, but it'll be there, you know, okay. but um. Now, well, I know every that script, movie, every script, script that I read, every I script that I read that helped me get those characters, bro, is uh, I use I use Keith David's voice from Greenleaf. Yeah, I read all my yeah, I read all my dialogue. I don't care what movie it is. Uh, I got, <laughs> well, why I got, is that? The way, man, I don't, I don't, why do you use Keith voice? Because because voice? his voice, dude, his voice, dude, it helps me find. I don't know what it is. It helps me. I try to I try to do a Morgan Freeman voice, but his voice helped me find that character. Every oh, time I, like, like when I read something, I'm just like, you know, because he got the intellect, that 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 um that authority. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Let me tell you something. The next time <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Dang. Yeah, I was in green leaves, but before I did that, I was smoking green leaves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben, I got to ask you probably one of the most important questions of the entire Tuesday, Super Tuesday, Touche Day, right? Right on. Do you think it's okay for a black man not to wear a mustache? Do you really have a problem with black men who don't wear mustaches? I'm just curious. I'm not for personal gain, but, you know, just to make Two Face look dumb. I mean, me personally, I don't have a, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even, I, I can't say I would have a problem. I wouldn't say I wouldn't have a problem because I ain't got no business looking at no man look. You See, know what that's man? what I be trying to say, bro. They all so, up in my do, face. Yeah. But it's, you got to remember, when you were little, you was a boy. You didn't have a mustache. Yeah. I mean, who said you're supposed to grow up with this hair on your lip? Hey, now, look. but this is the thing that puzzles me. When you cut it off, why your lip get bigger? I don't exactly. understand. Yeah, I don't get that That's either, bro. But hey, the, the chicks love it, though, bro. That's what be nuts. You know what I'm saying? The chicks be yeah, going here. You know why they love it, right? You know why they love it? Because they think you got a commercial coming out. They think, it, yeah, exactly. They think, it, they think you got a commercial coming out. <laughs> They're like, oh, he about to get that check. That's that check <laughs> lip right yeah. there. That nigga, get real. <laughs> that nigga get real. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga was hey, man, right I know the yes, though. The reason I ask you that is because one of the reasons I wanted to get away from I, I wore a beard my whole life. As long as you know me, I had a beard. I might have cut oh, it yeah, up a couple yeah. times, but I've always had a full face of hair. So I felt like my face was protected all these years, and most people don't know what I actually look like. Hell, I ain't even know. Right. To be straight up. So I was like, instead of losing weight, I just shave my facial hair off. That's like 15, 20 pounds right there. Hell yeah, that's like taking your jacket off in the house. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like immediately my face, my, it's all happy about it. So I just like the fact that I can switch through looks. Because, you know, dudes, we only got so many hairstyles. Man. Yeah, you know right saying? The older you get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, uh, like, you get you get over 50, the only one you got is the hole in one. That's that little, <laughs> <laughs> that little thing, right? That, that little, yeah, that little thing right there. The whole it's thing. Of the car. We appreciate you. Uh, please tell the people where they can find you, how they can get up with you, how they can, how they can, how we can help boost to all the people that you need to be the next Richard Pryor. Because I know, I know you would destroy it. Man. I know we wouldn't I'm even know the difference. We wouldn't even know the difference. I'm telling y'all out there, all y'all fans and followers out there that's listening, I promise y'all, we would not know the difference, man. So tell us, Martini, how do we find you? Where are we going? How do, what's your cash app, your Instagram, your Facebook, all that? Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Um, my, my Instagram is the real Martini Harris. The real Martini Harris. It's spelled just like the dream, M-A-R-T-I-N-I. -I. 
and Harris, of course. Uh, my Twitter is the same thing, the real Martini Harris. My Facebook is Martini Harris. Um, YouTube, man, go on YouTube, man. Put me in, you'll see everything, man. You see all my videos. But that main video, man, go like, share, channeling a legend. I also got other skits that I have on there as well. Um, I got, oh, I got, uh, I got two skits where, well, not a skit, but I actually made LL Cool J laugh. So he called, yeah, he man. actually called me and put me down to do it again. So that was cool. So um, yeah. that's all on my Instagram. Y'all need to, y'all can check that out. But man, that channeling the legend, um, my Richard Pryor piece, man, check that out. I'm trying to get that mug pushed so Kenya Bears can see it. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully whoever behind this thing, man, can, you know, give me my shot, man, because that's all I need, man. I want to say shout out to Bob Sumner, man, Mr. Bob Sumner. He the one yeah. kept the world laughing all the way from the 90s. Um, yes, himself, Tim Brown, big shout out to them. But, you know, Bob yeah. Sumner did a, a great write up on me. You know what I'm saying? So that was that was that was power, man. That was power right there. Yeah. So, you know, it's the yeah. same guy that 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 hand picked Bernie Mac. You know what I'm saying? Mark Lawrence, you know, same yeah. dude. So, yeah. Uh, so y'all can find me there, man. Follow me, man. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Not at home, but follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, <laughs> The Real Martini Harris. You know what I'm saying, man? It's been a blessing, brothers. I appreciate it. You know? Hey, God, much appreciated to have you on the show, man. You know, we've been doing this for a long time. We're going to keep doing it for a lot longer, too, man. Big blessing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh and I got hey. another movie, Amazon Prime, that's um, that's airing right now. It's called The Corner Store. And go Corner. check that out. Oh. Yep. The Corner Store. Yep. Uh, me, Mike Bonner, Bill Hill, and my own girl, Shawnee D. We all play Dino. Check it out, man. Yeah. Hey, yeah. that's funny. Right it's there. Funny story. I'm checking yeah. that out. Is it on is it on uh YouTube or what is, where is that? So no, it's on Amazon. 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 Yeah, Amazon. Uh, let me look at stuff my wife got. I gotta log into her shit. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah go on over there. Wait a minute, man. I thought her shit was your shit. We can talk about that after we get off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was what a marriage was about. Everything was together. Anyway, right. I ain't never been married. I don't know. I don't know. 50-50 right. ain't everything together. Hell yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to get ready for this show, man. I'm going to go hit this. All right, brother. I'm about to go hit well, this show. Thing, I'm about to make these folks laugh. Yes, sir. All They're going to need it, man. Up. Be safe, brother. Hey, oh, I'm yeah, going to hit you tomorrow. Man. I got you. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. Um, Damon, Damon gave me a date for my um for Riddles. On my birthday okay. weekend, my birthday fall on a Friday, January 29th. So okay, yeah, yeah. So well, I'll be in shock. You gonna be there because you know you know we doing the whole whole weekend. You can come Thursday through Sunday. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, if they doing Thursday through Sunday, well, that'll be the 28th. But yeah, I asked him for that weekend. I asked him last month. So right. and he told me he told me last time that yeah, man, we gotta do your birthday. You know, what I'm saying weekend or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, bet. You know, so. Right, yeah, we'll see you on your birthday, definitely. Yes, if we don't see yes, you before, sir. but I'm gonna hit you up tomorrow for sure. I got you, man. All right. Oh, my cash app is dollar sign Martini Harris. Capital M A R T I N I. Capital H A R R I S. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, my we got you. So if somebody yeah, send me a few dollars, that'd be cool. A few dollars. 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 You get what you ask hey, for. Hey, no. hey, <laughs> if you send us some money, just put in the comments, boy, Terry show, so he know where he got it from. And then yeah, that's right with you. Uh, yeah, hey, yeah, thank you, go. brother. We appreciate you, man. Straight legend to be Martini Harris, brother. Yes, sir. Love All right, man. Right on, man. Next Next time. Time. Love you yes, too, sir. bro. Yep, yep. Hey, so uh, it's about time for our next topic. And wait, you are wait, 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 wait. Before we get there, man, one thing that really tripped me out about Martini, and it, it, dude, it still does it to this day. When he snaps into his impressions, it still catches me off guard. And mm -hmm. I, it does. It I does. never it see does. it coming. And then the next thing you know, you four words into it, man. I'm just saying, <laughs> go check that brother out, man. And if you if you ever get a chance to see him live, like you said, he'd be in Chicago first week of twelve into into January. You know, bro, go check him out. I mean, everybody in Detroit already know. What up, though, to Detroit, too, by the way? My fault, man. We got we always have a few heads from Detroit uh, checking in. 
It's a lot of people in the building. You got some Hillcrest Hawks in the building. What's up, everybody? The next building. You got some. You got a little bit of everything. But look, it's time to throw a little shade. So go ahead. All right, man. Well, I voted today, and it was tough. Not just because of what was going on with the election, you know, but because of what's going on with the state of the world. So, I mean, it's a lot of people. Like Martini brought this up, and he was joking about it, man. It's a lot of people dealing with mental illness in this country, man. So, I want to throw shade on people who are using those people to try to get political gain, and that's sad because I've even fell victim to it. A lot of videos that we've been reposting, you know, those people ain't right in the head. You know those people is they would have been crazy. They just need something to be crazy about, man. And and ever since we shut down all these institutions, these people are just running the street. And that's really the majority of the people that you're seeing acting a fool. Now, mind you, as we get closer and closer to the election, I think some of those mentally ill people have inspired the less mentally ill to act more mentally ill because they know they have an excuse because our president acts as if he's mentally ill, but they're pretending. That's nothing to play with. That's nothing to like tiptoe around either. So I feel like, you know, the, the different parties using those videos for political vain, gain and in vain and political gain as well. You know, that's just we got to put it into that, man. That's just the first thing I want to speak on. Second thing I want to speak on is uh, the fact that when I went to go take my ballot in and this is just trying to stay on topic, I skateboard. I'm going to put the video out after the show, man. I, I, I skateboarded to my polling place in my neighborhood. Because I ain't want the police harassing me because I'm a black man driving a nice car. And then I came back. And one of the things that it felt like, it, no joke, y'all, I had to just drop my ballot in the box. And never in the history of me voting, and I've got a chance to vote in a few presidential elections now, I'm 41, you know. I've never felt like I was actually throwing my ballot in a trash can until today. Mm. Mm. And that's just exactly how I felt. Because I was like, they were like, oh, okay, are you registered to vote? I was like, yeah. And they were like, cool. Do you, you know, if you're going to go ahead into the polling place, you need to fill this out. I was like, no, I already filled up my ballot. I just want to drop it off in person. I wanted to be more official. And she was like, oh, okay, cool. Well, then, yeah, you just put it over there in that in that uh, ballot box. And it was basically just a garbage can with a slot in the top. Damn. Well, because like, when you're doing it the way you did it, unfortunately, they can't verify it until they have to. So you already sealed it, so they got to go to somebody that can read it, match your signatures, and then if they deem your signature match, they can open it, and then they got to verify some more stuff, then they can read it. So that is probably the worst way to vote is to have it sealed and dropped off. But that's yeah, man, I was a little really disappointed, man. I ain't gonna lie. I was a little disappointed. I thought it would be a little bit better than what the way it was set up to be straight up. I mean, maybe I should have taken the extra time to just go inside and vote, but I'm already around too many people and I didn't want to be in the polling place. I'll be honest with you. I said, I'll go there. I wanted to be at a location at an actual certified polling place that I know that was on the website that I didn't want to just drop it in the mail, you know, cause I've been hearing a lot of weird things about that, but I wanted to take that extra step. And when I did it, it felt like they was like, Oh yeah, you might as well throw that in the garbage. That's how I really felt, man. We got to do better, man. I heard something on the news today that America is one of the hardest places to vote on the entire planet. How is one of the quote unquote freest countries one of the hardest places to vote? It's really not that hard. It, it, it's just what it is, is um, the process. Not, not many people, you got to think about it. Like, how many other countries really get to vote like this? Like, I mean, yeah. I would. Jamaica, lot, bro. Yeah. believe it or no, not, it's a no, lot of country. No, 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 don't get it twisted, bro. They cannot. That's why they was protesting and stuff with us with a lot of stuff. They wasn't protesting about black lives all the way. They were protesting. You notice a lot of their protests be about voters and the right to, to have a voice, period. Uh, we was in Jamaica one time and they, they, they got armed people at every voter thing when they was voting in Jamaica. It was crazy. Like, like it's it's freer and it's better here. We just complain because we bitches. The truth is, the truth is, it's really easy to vote. I didn't even register to vote, G. I just walked in any poll place today and they looked at my ID and told me where to go. I went to that place and I voted. It took like three hours. Yeah, no, no, no. That's not what I mean by easy, man. Not just in process. Let's see, yeah, that part of the process is easy because that part of the process seems to be neglected. 
mm-hmm. because the popular vote doesn't count. The Electoral College makes most of the decisions mm-hmm. and they take away voters rights from people who've already paid their debts to society. I was on the ballot this year and I for sure voted that those people should be allowed to vote. If you paid your debt to society, how have they been taking away all those votes all these years, even though that person has supposedly paid their debt to society? There's all these different r- rules and regulations and things that make the voting look like a fraudulent process because there's too many loopholes. You know, and that's what, what I mean. Not so much in price, like the process of getting to the poll, yeah. But what happens to that vote after it leaves your, your brain and goes into the polling system? That makes it, it's, it's, it's ultra difficult, is my point. So I got a, uh, so one of the, uh, Steve Turner said, what's up? Shout out to Steve. Uh, you know they throw it's away 500,000 plus voting ballots every election. They say it's every because election. people don't fill them out correctly. And that's what I was telling you. They, they they are more likely to throw it out if you do it without just going in on Super Tuesday and filling out how they tell you and putting it in the machine. The machine read it and say it's correct. You walk out, you know for sure it was counted. They ask when you walk in, do you want to do electronic or you want to write it in? I wrote mine in and I want to see that machine hit that correct button. So that's how I like to make sure my vote is counted. So unfortunately, you're right. A lot of votes gonna get thrown out. They don't really want. They gonna decide who they want anyway. And that's what we were saying last time. If the electoral yep. college is not gonna represent the voice of the people, then whose voice are they represent? You know. So it's just where we at with it, man. But yeah, that's, that's why I just wanted to speak on those two topics, man. I just don't. I just don't understand. Why one of the most advanced countries, the country that created Facebook and Twitter and Tesla Motors and Ford Motor Company, all these major companies and corporations, right? The power of the American dollar and the power of the American uh, corporations and apparently, you know, our financial prowess or whatever in, in, the, in the global market. Why is it we can't get something as simple as an election to a much a much easier process for them to tally and calculate. I understand they were like, we had Russian collusion on the internet and all these other things, but I mean, we've had them mess with the voting ballots when they were paper ballots. We mm. should be able to find some type of secure way for people to vote and us to elect the majority, not just the person who wins an electoral college or strategically won particular battleground states just to sway the election in their favor because that's a different i understand it's a political game but the only people that lose out are the people that are supposed to be represented by these political parties that's true and that's a fact and 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 let's talk about it more as we talk about our unsung heroes our unsung hero and i don't think i don't think y'all gonna love it but terry is gonna love my selection for our unsung hero uh and i believe honestly our unsung hero I don't know what's going on. Uh, is uh, are we still on? <laughs> yeah, man. Fucking Kanye just walked. He lost there the last. Go. Okay, exactly. That's our unsung hero is Kanye West. He just uh, lost the last one too, man. We gonna Jeez. give it to him. Look, let's give Kanye some real love, some real respect. Kanye technically is our unsung hero. Think about it, black people. Like, let's really, really think about really think about really it, think about what he was able to do before he decided to do this. We all thought he was crazy anyway, right? We thought he was crazy. We thought he was on meds. We felt like, what's Kanye doing? Why would he? You know, it was always a why about Kanye. Why he doing that? What's going on about Kanye? And then he had the 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 wherewithal to start a party, get on ballots. It's people like Jesse Jackson who still. I was just about to bring Jesse Jackson up, bro. (laughs) Jesse Jackson tried. on the ballot, bro. He couldn't even. They would not let him on no state ballot. Period. And a man with a political career and a career in activism could not make it on a presidential ballot. But Kanye West. With multiple platinum albums and the production of one of the finest uh, engineers in the world, it made it on a ballot. This dude has zero political experience. I don't understand why people aren't making a bigger deal out of that. That is crazy, bro. Yeah, that's that is 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 is, is mind blowing, and uh, that's why I want to shout out to Kanye to Yeezy. I mean, think about yeah, it. Man. He went from he went from just being a regular producer. 
Like he just was just producing music, got into one car accident, got with Jay-Z, and killed the game with the music, married Kim Kardashian, uh, started a shoe line, got the number one shoe line selling, and then ran for president, got on ballots, and got some got his own hat. Look, Kanye really deserved to be a hero mm -hmm. in the sense that if you really want to say anybody can be president, he has Kanye also proved proof. he has also proved how you can do it with with Donald Trump. It's amazing. It's annoying. It's amazing and yeah. annoying. But well, I'm gonna give it. To it's you. amazing and annoying because, like I said, when he did, you can you imagine how big of a sore loser Kanye is gonna be after this? We are never gonna get rid of this dude. It's, it's, it's this might be the start of his full political career because just for him to do what he did already lets him know it's an indicator for Kanye. And if you know anything about Kanye West, he's tenacious, bro. He is a relentless worker. Now. Depending on the state of the world after today, we don't know what's going to happen. But I do know this. He's accomplished something just by way of getting on the ballot. Man. Think about this. How many black men have been on a presidential ballot in the history of the United States of America? Man, in my man. mind, I can think of two. Mm -hmm. One of them won. Wow. So, and speaking of that, our uh, next topic. It's time to get in a little FaceTime, baby. And uh, FaceTime, today I'm going to do FaceTime live, right? Hey. And Shady, know what we about to be on, because we definitely going to do this FaceTime live. And uh, you know how it get down. So how we do this in FaceTime is, I always going to tell y'all, Biden is up 63 to 48. Right now, we're going to do live. Uh, broadcast. Uh, Biden just won New York. He won New Jersey. Trump is winning the red states as like everybody predicted. Now, I'm a little afraid because to me, always around Super Tuesday, uh, since I was little, we watched this like a hawk. Uh, me and the parents, they would sit around and stress about who going to win, when they going to win, why they going to win, and who they all voted for. And back in the day, Nobody used to tell you who they voted for. It used to yeah. be a secret. It used to be a That's super right. secret. My mama didn't know who my daddy voted for. And the only way you knew is when the person won. And uh, whoever was pouting obviously didn't vote that way. This is how it was. Yeah. And whoever was yeah. happy, <laughs> whoever was you, happy. You started with their lip poked out. And they'd be like, oh, OK, we know who you voted for. Mm -hmm. It used to be private. It used to be about you. It used to be your own decision. Now, voting is such a general population decision. We all decide. You go to the poll and they tell you, vote all blue. Vote for all the Democrats. They tell you who to vote but for. See, you don't even got to know. That's one of the reasons why black voters don't turn out in the numbers that they do. For mm -hmm. years, we've been saying you got to keep your daughter off the poll. Keep your daughter off the poll. Keep your kid off the poll. And then every four years, we confuse them and say, you got to go to the poll. And they're like, you've been telling us don't go to the poll. It's, they, they just, it's just, I'm telling you, bro, they just be confusing us. But I do want to double back on something, Bo, real quick, because in California, I heard they were only doing this here. I thought they did this on every ballot. But when you got your mail-in ballot, and if, whether you want to drop it off or not, mm -hmm. there's these little check stub type things that you mm -hmm. get with your ballot. So after you fill it out, I mm -hmm. can go back in and check to see if my ballot was accepted. It's like you can pretty much track your ballot like a UPS package. Okay. And all I got to do is scan the QR code on both pages and boom. So, you know, not only did I get a little sticker, I actually got a receipt from this one. So I'm hoping this receipt's going to be worth something and we really make history tonight. I think we I think we might. But um, it's, uh, <laughs> I think I, I think, know, man, it's, it's a very scary thing. Like you, were supposed to, you dropped your ballot off without putting no stickers on it. They're not going to count your vote, bro. You live like, in California. You, you don't know leave, the hell. You don't know my life, this ain't, this this ain't ain't like right here. You can't just leave parts off a car. You got to put all that on the car, man. <laughs> this is, nah, man. I'm just, this, this is the receipt, brother. So Joe Biden just won Connecticut. He won of seven electoral votes. He won Maryland. He won Connecticut. He won New York, and he won New Jersey. So now did, it, now, did he win Atlanta, though? Because he was trying to get Young Jeezy to do a song about him the same way Young Jeezy did a song about Barack Obama. So well, I was just I curious. Think, did he... 
I think he 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 might not have finished the count in Atlanta. You know, black people in Atlanta, they still late voting. You know how I roll in the states. Hey man, they- I rolled up in there late. I did it thirty minutes before the show. I barely made it on the show. I ain't even have a chance to put on my whole suit. It's really just some jogging pants at the bottom. So I was late because oh, I well, had to get to that. Pole, you know what I'm saying? I had to get to that pole. So I was like, man, you better throw that jacket on and keep it moving around here. Hey man, they worried about the battleground states. All I'm saying is, it's always exciting to me to watch these uh, presidential elections. It's kind of like the playoffs of the political game. And of the United States of America, it, it whether is. or not we're going to win or die this year, yeah, no, that's what it feels like. Definitely. That's the thing. Honestly, this vote ain't even that important. It's, it's less important than the vote in another two years for all the senators and for all the republic. I mean, for state representatives. That's who is mm-hmm. important. I mean, we could do all this. The president still only can sign in what they what they put in front of his face or he can put mm-hmm. something in that they can agree to. But they still are yeah. the most important in that group. So it's important yeah. that we figure out next two years and we spend just as much time voting in two years for these senators and state representatives. Because I spent time, but this one, it was just about judges, the president, and uh, I think Willie... The Willie Washington party was out here killing the game. They got this old party. Oh, slick Willie, Slick Willie, old oh, slide you $20, Willie. <laughs> Let me slide you there real quick. <laughs> they got him with the teacup. <laughs> yeah, man. Let me slide y'all a couple dollars, man. Go on, let little Willie take care of that, man. I ain't big yeah, Willie. I'm say, little Willie. Hey, they say you need to talk to your nephew. What you talking about? That's what Steve said. You need to talk to your nephew. They got him with the teacup. I don't uh, know what that means. You know, yeah, Steve. I'm gonna call Black later, man. I call Steve. Let me do something. Got him with the up. Yeah, I know, right? That sounds like some get out. Oh, they they hit him with the get out shit. Okay, I see what you did there, bro. I see what you did there, bro. I it took me a sec. That's my brother on that line. Y'all don't know this, Steve. Anyway, my dude, thank you. Yeah, Chris, he said, I got hey, you. He said, "Hey, Chris. Hey, what? Well, road story time." <laughs> I'm going to hit Chris up, bro. I got you. <laughs> uh, so what's your road story for today, man? Because uh, you got on the suit tie. Did you go on the road trip to find each individual piece of that outfit? Because none of it match. I mean. Uh, first of all, I've, I, I've only seen you wear a suit five times in your entire life. You have no idea what you're talking about. My road story I want to talk about the road story to the poll today because I did take a very specific journey. I want you to tell us about your journey to go vote today, too. And it was important because, I mean, yeah, there was a point during this whole election process where I had given up and I didn't want to vote for anybody. That's why I started making all the Kanye jokes, because I'm tired of this being why I only chose choices to men who could die at any moment. This is a country full of of young politicians that could, could really incite some change, not just incite riots and hold on to policies that are almost 100 years old. So I was very upset about it. And it took me a while to get to that point where I was like, you know what? No, I had too many people checking in on me like, dude, are you really going to vote for Kanye? Are you really not going to vote? Are you going to throw away your vote? And it really made me think about my parents and what they went through. And, and I had my, some of my elders here in the state of California even hit me to check to make sure I was going to vote. And I said, yeah, you know man. what? There's no point in you throwing it away. We do have some type of power. So I just wanted to, you know what I'm saying, use that power. And I made my decision. I'm not going to really tell y'all who I voted for because I'm an OG like that. And you just going to have to, you know, guess for yourself. Worry, get your own business. You know what I mean? But I did vote. And I did try to pay attention to some of the local voting, the local voting things like Proposition 22, which is a big deal for Uber and Lyft drivers and, you know, comedians. It's like a part time job for a lot of upstart comedians. Uh, it keeps us afloat. I've never done Lyft and Uber, so I don't know the logistics behind how that works for them. But I I remember I checked with every Lyft driver and every Uber driver that I've used over the last couple of months. Like, what do y'all feel about it? And I I voted based on that. But even more importantly, I started thinking about Buddy with that cranberry juice. You know what I'm talking about, Bo? Mm -hmm. The dude who was skateboarding with the cranberry juice went viral. Mm, mm-mm. What and he went viral because he didn't care. He was having some issues, you know. So I think he had an issue with his truck or something, and he just went and you know he said, "Skip it, I'm gonna skate back to the truck." 
and he was drinking cranberry juice out the bottle, skating back, and it was that feeling of I don't give two shits no more, right? Mm -hmm. And I wanted that feeling. I wanted to grab a little bit of that feeling from Buddy because when I skateboard, I escape. That's probably the same thing he was doing. It was only about a mile and a half away from the crib, you know? So I skated from my house to my polling place, and it was a trip when I rolled up to the polling place. They had a whole different vibe, you know, because I was looking at everybody else. They looked scared. They looked nervous. The workers was trying to, you know, like calm people down and make people feel comfortable. Not nervous in the sense that everybody was like, you know, teeth chattering, but you can just see it in people's eyes that they don't know what's about to happen, you mm-hmm. know, with this election. So that was my road trip. I skateboarded from my crib to the polling place to cast my vote. To hopefully give us some change in this government. So, you know, that, that yes. was what I just, that's the real story I wanted to share considering it's election day. Well, the story, uh, that's a great story. And uh, it's been crazy because the road stories for election day has been a wide variety of um, uh, insane uh, ideals. So in Tenley Park, they had a sign out um, in front of the election uh, where you vote the polling place. Uh, <laughs> they said uh, you got on tidy whities with a tie, huh? Your tie tucked in, your tidy whities. <laughs> All of you sweat suit and Timberland wearing monkeys can shut up. So I'm uh, not dressed like a man. Tie not. All y'all, everybody who say that got clip on ties in their house. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but uh, what we saw this morning, the first thing was uh, a racist. Uh, some racist rhetoric. Uh, Shelton said, um, did you go pick up a watchtower on the way to vote? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, no, on the I ain't even going to start the show today, bro. I ain't even going in. With on the serious note, though, um, in Tennessee Park, there was a sign um, about I a, a niggas with babies or something. Yeah, hit the nigger baby. It was a very disrespectful sign, and um, also, uh, we heard a couple more places they had some white people kind of standing outside trying to intimidate um, in Homewood and in other areas. It's, it's, um, so my road trip was more about making sure that the polling places where my people's going didn't have issues. So I drove around to my areas and looked, make sure everything was kosher and made sure that there wasn't no agitators. Uh, you know, uh, they said two black boys put that sign out there. It probably was. Um, it probably was. That's and, what I'm saying. Everybody just getting mm-hmm. caught up going on again. You know what right. I mean? That's this is nothing new, and mm-hmm. we know this. There's always going to be some racist people that pop up during every election, whether it's been Barack Obama or George Bush before that. But, you know what I mean? All, also, every, if you think about it. But we also know that there's always people who join in with the racists. You know, even in our own kind, you know. So for them to put that out there, knowing the times, they probably was just looking for a little excitement, fame, trying to start some stuff. But at the end of the day, that don't change the fact that there's groups of people uh, following caravans of Trump supporters uh, stopping the bus. For hey, right that there. was crazy. Because, yeah, and, you want to talk and, about road and, stories. What yeah. president in the history of running for the president had hit during the presidential campaign on election night had a bunch of crazy Radical. anti like whatever they got. You know what I'm saying? What president has ever dealt with that? Mm-hmm. Where that they got cornered. They basically surrounded his bus mm-hmm. on the highway and I remember when Barack Obama was running for office, you couldn't even park your car on the block of his house. Mm, exactly. Exactly. But all of a sudden, when Joe Biden is running for president against Trump, they can surround his car with a bunch of mud trucks. They can surround his bus with a bunch of mud trucks and no police escort. Nobody know nothing. <laughs> Sounds to me like it's some BS going on. And y'all know it. We know it. That means exactly. that they don't the, the police don't want to protect Biden and no one wants to protect him because he goes against the police. He spoke out against police brutality. And yeah. that's proof that is that to me that's how I feel. Because when has a president not had enough security to keep a bunch of mud trucks and races off of his his uh presidential campaign tour? I mean, let, let, let's say it even like this. I mean, normally there's just senators. He's an actual vice president. He oh. actually 
has a detail of uh, of social security or whatever the security offices is for life. Like, what, what yeah. the hell? You're still a government official being guarded. How is this possible? How is this possible? So again, I think it's because they left. That's why. Mm -hmm. So uh, we also just uh, saw that in uh, in, in uh, Indiana, the Republicans just took back over. It's the red state again. Uh, the Democratic Indiana's uh, always red. What you mean oh, again? They had a Democratic um, governor just. It just lost. Yeah, yeah. The governor is one thing, bro. But when it's the presidential race, that place been red long as yeah. I can remember. Yeah, Secret Service. There you go, Shell. I couldn't say that. I said, uh, I said Social Security. Well, he owed the Shell. I said Social Security. Was secret his Santa. He said he's supposed to have a Secret Santa detail or something. I don't know how it is called. <laughs> secret but Santa. Where the Secret so Santa's at? I ain't so seen no so Secret Santa's for Biden. So look. So the next uh, last. Last uh, topic I wanted to finish off with because I know it's going to take a couple minutes for us to talk about this. So they saying, okay, regardless of who win, they saying if Trump win, the rednecks and these people who driving these trucks are going to go crazy again, and they're going to actually like wild out on the black people because they won again. And then they also saying if Biden win, they really going to go crazy. And, and riot and lose because they wanted Trump to win. What are we prepared and are you prepared for this? And have you heard about this? Yeah. And basically what that's saying is this ain't got nothing to do with the presidency. It's a bunch of white people who still hate black people and Mexicans so much. That they will go to any end to make us uncomfortable in this country, even to kill us. And I hope everybody who pays attention to this white, black, or different understands that that's what's really going on. The president was just the lighter. It was just the lighter fluid. Fire was already here. They just threw some more lighter fluid on a fire that was been burning. And these people want to do something. They still been talking about the, the you know, the Confederate War, the Civil War, and the, and the South will rise again as long as I've been alive. And they just getting stronger. I think their numbers might have been dwindling, but now it seems like their numbers are growing because because of us having leadership like this. So that's just the way I see it, man. That's just what America is. Y'all want to talk about making America great. That's just what it is. Mm -hmm. America is great. We are great at being racist. We are great at being conquerors. We are great at oppressing people. We are great at incarcerating people. We mm -hmm. are great. We're just really great for all the wrong reasons. And everybody who aligns with the people who are continuing that process, all those people's blood over your hand. I don't care how you feel about it. Everybody, George Floyd and all of them, if you align with a man who will make a mockery of a minority in a country, why are you the majority? That's literally bullying somebody. So if you're going to allow the president to bully Mexicans and bully immigrants and bully black people, and I mean, I'm not saying he did the worst to us, but he showed him throw some side jabs and then he tried to clean it up with some old political business. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, is this is bigger than the political party this is bigger than the election this is the the country now trying to purge black people <laughs> out of they, said, they said preach tidy white <laughs> i'll be tidy white today okay whatever it takes all right Whatever it takes, man, that's what's really happening. And I mean, that's why I want people to take tonight more seriously. I know I haven't tried to be funny or anything. I've been playing little jokes a little bit here and there, but it's more because I want everybody to understand this is a lot more serious than we've been downplaying it to be. It's not something you're going to be able to ignore whether you voted or not. Be careful, y'all. It's a bunch of people out there that might want to hurt you just because they're hurt or they're scared. And this is white and black people. It's going to be weird, man. We saw what happened when Trump got elected a few years ago. Imagine what's going to happen, whether he gets elected or not elected tonight. That has nothing to do with the presidency. This is just people wanting to act out. That's true. And, and so it's be like, careful, it's, man. It's like Biden is winning Colorado. Uh, he, he's, got, he's getting all the blue states. Um, it's looking like he's getting what he's supposed to. It's looking like all the predictions that they're saying are falling into place. That means it's really going to be up to... Uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Trump is hoping yeah, Pennsylvania is going to be a tough one, too, and that's going to be weird. They've picked most of the presidents over the last few elections. Exactly, and they it's are Pennsylvania saying, and Florida. They, 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 uh, they already saying was, is that um, they let people vote late, and they're going to count them late, too, so 
they that's gonna be a nightmare if we really wait on Pennsylvania. I think I think that's gonna. But it's be- all dude. Pennsylvania has elected the president multiple times. I think they only messed up in two thousand. No, that was Florida. Florida as well. So there's a there's a few battleground, not just states but counties inside of Florida and Pennsylvania that they're looking at as kind of predictors for the election. Like you know, these are strong indicators of the outcome of the election if the person mm-hmm. wins this particular county. And I I looked at a little you know a few of those things. Um, you know, today is I was just just kind of going through the news because I've already seen so much. I have no reason to even want to look at any more information on either one of these dudes. So we got it. We got to stay in tune because, you know, it's like um, they got to get 200 and some electoral votes. Right now, Biden got 89 and Trump got 51. Now, they yeah. ain't really count none of the red states yet. They ain't barely count anything. So. It's always scary when they always make somebody in the Super League early, you know, especially during these races. So uh, just, uh, man, uh, I say, I hope we won the local races. That's that, yeah. that's what we really need to win. Whether we get Biden or Trump in, Trump is like doing another four years of cocaine. Biden is like a yeah. designated driver and sleeping in the back of the Uber after you did cocaine. So it's just a matter of what are we voting for? Are we voting? Who's paying for the cocaine? That's really what this election is about. We, if we you paying Trump, for it regardless. We paying for it regardless. Yeah, that's true. But Trump ain't going to tax the cocaine. So that's the reason why people voting for him. They, I did. I, 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 hold on. Actually, that's false. He will tax the cocaine. Sorry about that. That was just from the newsroom. Um, he just told us he won't tax the coke. It will be taxed if you vote for Trump. Your cocaine fees are going to go through the roof, and you heard it here first. See, that's because when you shave off your upper lip beard, I'm not even asking. Okay. <laughs> it's that. See, that's the lip of the cocaine lip when it ain't got no hair on it. You can keep cocaine off of it real easy. I told you last week that my hairline on my mustache is receding. <laughs> And I am not going to be like LeBron and get hair plugs in my lip or nothing like that. I'm just going to shave it off, bro. I ain't going to sit there and keep playing with this immature-ass mustache. Mm-hmm. Hey, well, I already know. If you want to make fun of me for being bald, you go right ahead. <laughs> well, I that can't, goes for all y'all. I can't say nothing about hairlines or baldness because me and LeBron are cousins in the hairline department. First cousins, apparently. <laughs> and I, I am not a distant second either. I'm like, damn, man, I didn't even notice that. I'm going to say, yes, let's speak on it. Shut up, Joe. We're not speaking on <laughs> Joe, another dude with a whole head of hair. That's why he over here talking, man. Yeah, he got that good hair. He like Becky yeah, man. good hair. <laughs> All right, face, hey, face, man, we're going to need to get ready to wrap it up, man. We got to pay attention to what's going on. I, I mean, I hate to be like this, but this is the same way I am with the NBA Finals, same way I am with the, you know, Super Bowl. I, I tend to really pay attention at the last minute. And I know we're getting close. I know this is just night one, but I'm expecting this to be a three-day problem. And I, I hope I'm wrong. I really do. But I feel like it's going to be a three-day issue. And I want to see what happens at the end of the first day. And we're, we're closing in on it, man. I know it's already late in Chicago. We still got a couple hours here. I want to jump online and start messing with some folks. So Hey, you already know, and we love um, definitely this episode. This uh, We love Martini Harris. Y'all make sure y'all yeah, look sure. up at, um, at Martini Harris or the real Martini Harris um, on his Instagram, Facebook. He's going out for that Richard Pryor role with, with Burris. So y'all make sure y'all y'all give him that shout out. Also, Terry is auditioning uh, to uh, definitely uh, find a new suit because we sick of uh, him looking uh, like. You ain't never even seen this suit. You don't even know nothing about this. You look like a funeral. I'm auditioning to take uh, Steve Harvey's job on the Family Feud, though. I feel like I can do a better job. (laughs) I'm tired of this funeral director look. Uh, He. (laughs) That's because you're close to death. That's why. Like, your old ass nigga. That's why you're like, man, stop scaring me. You look like you're coming to my funeral. That's uh, what happens when you get old. Look like like the usher who, uh, not in the family, but always got to hold the casket. <laughs> you, you look like you still got to you look like you still got to go put on a real outfit for you to wear today. This was just an in-between outfit before you put on your real clothes. 
That's, that's what you got like. one tall shoulder pad. It's always made for the, the casket to sit on that show. <laughs> this is that's the casket pad. <laughs> you said it's a Paul Bear suit. All right, I'll let you have that one. That's pretty good. All right, so uh shout out to everybody, man. Thanks, T man. This is another great episode. You got it. Yeah, appreciate y'all tuning in last week for me. Real quick uh, about the election. It's about to be over. It's the last day. It's too super touche day. So uh who you got? Who gonna win and uh what you wanna bet? Yeah, man, I'm down with that. Yeah, put it in the comments, man. Let's speak on it. I'll catch y'all next week. God bless y'all. Be safe. Everybody, please be safe. No matter what the election results, nobody's safe. So be safe. Don't 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 expect your safety to be taken care of by any of these people. Make and sure that you are the most that you make sure your safety is being taken care of. You know what I mean, too. And that's another thing I'm going to say. They saying if things go crazy, uh, uh, the ops will be trying to attack us. They already carjacking people in the city. Uh, it's a lot going on, man. Y'all super be safe. Y'all like, like really be safe because if things go the way we want it to go, they're going to act a fool. And we got to protect our elders, protect our people. And if it go the way they want it to go, they're going to burn right. stuff like, like if they won a championship or something. So also, yeah, pretty much. And think about it like that. So there's always something to be uh, protective over. Y'all make sure y'all be safe. Check on your grandparents and your mothers and your fathers and your cousins and your uncles. And don't let no sh slide around y'all, man. We real, man. We got to handle our own. We don't need nobody yeah. else. Yeah. Yes, sir. Shout out to Shelby, right, man. Man. Steve Turner. Thank y'all for watching, man. Appreciate y'all, brothers. Yeah, let's get it. Yes, sir. Next time. Radio. Damn, my man feel better than yours. Look at your body, man. Body, man. Hey, and they don't know. Nobody never knew. But I was still in floor mats. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Look, I mean, I can touch my bed. Yeah, I'll bet. Why, why your glass? Yeah, I'll bet. Nigga, you ain't even at your house. Yeah, I'll bet. Why you dress like a... Yeah, I'll bet. Why you make your mask... Yeah, I bet. So I've been a kid. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I bet. At least, yeah, I bet. At least your teeth white. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I bet. I bet.